Over to you. Good morning and welcome. Uh, my name is Emmy. I'm the principal of a school for adult education in Belgium. Um, we have about 72 schools in the West Flanders and 15,000 uh, students. Uh, my school is the second largest school in Belgium. So I don't have to tell you, we collect a lot of uh, data. Oh, sorry. Um, so the problem is my um, clerks and receptionists, they can work with sheets, but they are not able to create their own formulas or use different uh, techniques together. So what I do is I made it for them. So I made pivot tables, I uh, put on filters, I used slicers for them, and I used query functions. Um, in a minute, I will show you the big data table um, and I'll show you how it works. But the problem with all of these techniques is that they don't feel comfortable with it. They don't know how it works and they want to put some memo notes on it to remember for the next time how to use it. But if you put memo notes in the output of a function, then uh, everything goes wrong. And at the start, I would ask them, why? Why do you do that? Um, then they go from, oh, sorry, but I just wanted to write a memo. I just wanted to adjust a little thing. Um, and I've just about given up on asking the question, why? Now, I've turned it around. Instead of writing a good query uh, function with all of the items in it for them, I've turned it around and I made a sheet that is accessible for them, that is readable for them, that is usable for them by using easy formulas, by hiding as much as I can and putting all of the difficult query functions on the back end so they can't see it anymore. For me, that's a lot more, that's a lot more work. And it's not always logical, but it's not my sheet, it's their sheet. So they should, be, uh, they should be able to use it, they should be able to read it, and um, they should be able to uh, continue with it, all right? So how do we do that? The first step I'll take is, like always, protect and hide the first data sheet, the original data sheet. The second step I'll take is I'll only use named ranges. Um, I'll use convenient names that they understand, and I, don't, I won't use symbols or spaces in the sheet names, short sheet names that they can understand. So I'll show you the uh, data table just in a minute, but here is the upper part of the data sheet. Um, in the first column, you see the training. So I will give that uh, column the name training. The second column is the course within the training. So I'll call that course. The third column is the school where the training is given. That is school, that's easy. And then we have uh, the column with the start dates. Okay, instead of using filters and slicers because uh, they always do something wrong with the filters, I will use validations and drop downs. They can't do anything wrong there. So if we see, I use three validation, three drop down lists. The first drop down list is the school. The second drop down list is the training. And the third drop down list is the start of uh, the course. Now, normally, when you use validation, the drop down list will not be connected to each other. But I want them to be connected to each other. If you choose a school, then you can only see the trainings at the given school. If you choose a school and a training, then only the given start dates at that school for that training should be uh, shown. So I'll stop the sharing here and I will go to uh, the data sheet. Just a minute. Here we go. Um, 
um, this one, all right, voila. This is the big data sheet. You will see here at the bottom data, my original sheet. If I go all the way down very fast, you will see I have about 34,000 uh, rows, which is a lot. And uh, my receptionist, they have to find the answers to the questions real fast. So we have to use drop-down lists and filters uh, to create a, a, a smart way of uh, finding answers to the questions. So what we do, you see here, I'll put it a little bit bigger. So you see here, column A is given the name training, column B is given the name course, column C is given the name school, and here column E is given the name start. So we create an extra sheet, which I will um, hide afterwards. And the first thing we do is we create a list with all the names of the schools. I used a formula, unique school, and we'll sort it out so we have a list um, on alphabetical order. So if we look at school, this is my first drop-down list. And you'll see we have all the schools here, and they can choose a school from the drop-down list. I'll go back to validate. For the second one, I need all the trainings. Here, I use a query function, but afterwards, the validate uh, tab will be hidden, so they can't see what uh, I have used. The query function gives me all of the trainings for the given school in C3. So these are all of the trainings for the given school. Okay, I make a validation list, and here you can see all of the trainings for the given school. So we have Swedish in Bruges. If I, for instance, choose um, Zwevehem, the last one, then I can choose then I can choose an administration course. I choose another one, for instance, this one. Wait a little bit. So and can also use to be to become a photographer in Zwevehem. All right. So my third one, the um, starting days again, I use a query function for the given school and for the given training, and then I have all the start dates. So if I go back to the validation, so I have my school, I have my training, and here I can see all of the start dates of the training, for instance. Good. Um, now, they need some answers to some questions, uh, for instance, they need to know how much enrollments are there for the course uh, for the photographer training. Yes, and this is February. I just put it on September, somewhere on September. Voila. Um, I will not use any formulas in this sheet because if they see the formulas, they will start thinking, how does it work? Can I put a memo on it? And then it's again uh, all ruined. Here also, I want to know how many courses and how many enrollment for each course of the training do we have. Here, I will not put any um, formulas for them. I use an extra tab where I put all of my calculations. So the total enrollments, I make the sum of the column enrollments for a given school, for a given training, and for a given date, yes? I'll give this answer uh, the name total. So here you see I'll, I have given it the name total. And when I return to school, here you will see the only thing they see is equals total. So they know total 
That is the total of enrollments. They won't, they won't ask themselves any questions. They won't put any memos uh, here. Same thing for the courses. I filter out on course for a given school, for a given training, and for a given start date. Then I get a list of all my courses and the number of uh, enrollments. I put a little if function in front. I could have used is empty as well for, uh, to uh, prevent that there would come um, error messages. Here, I have used an every formula with the courses to display the course and the enrollments. Again, they will see courses and they will know, all right, this is what we need to know. Normally, we have more uh, tables here, but for this little presentation and demonstration, I only use two. So if I go back to the presentation now, just try this out. Voila. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you see here my validation, which are connected now by using the query functions. You see that for another school, we get another list of trainings. I use a, a sort unique on all of the schools to get the first validation. I used my query function to get a connection with the first validation um, for the trainings. I used easy to read formulas and functions so they understand what's going on uh, in the sheet. So we have total here for the total enrollments. And I will protect uh, all of my data and all of my smart uh, and all of my formulas in a smart way so that uh, they uh, can't put any memos on it anymore. So this is about uh, the thing I wanted uh, to talk about. And now I'm uh, eager to listen to all of your questions and suggestions. Maybe I can uh, make it even better.